this is Stephanie Talk Tales and Trivia. How are you doing this episode, this week? I hope you're having a great one. Our topic for today is something that I have been dying to talk about. The topic is banned books. What is a banned book? Well, one answer we found on wikipedia.com is printed works, which are prohibited by law, which means free access is not permitted. The practice of banning books is a form of censorship, and it shouldn't happen. Freedom of the press in the United States is legally protected by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. This amendment is generally understood to prevent the government from interfering with the distribution of information and opinions. Simply put, a banned book is banned or censored, or not allowed, if it makes a person think differently than others want you to think. Well, that's not good. All it takes is one adult, a parent or otherwise, questioning or challenging one book and bringing it to the superintendent of a school's attention or a local librarian, bookseller at a local bookshop. That's all it takes. It stops Americans from forming their own opinions by removing them from those places because of its controversial content. Banning certain books happens all over the world, though, not just in the United States. In some cases and in some countries, banned books have been burned and refused publication or have become out of print for the reason of controversial content. And in some countries, a possession of a banned book is an act of treason, which is potentially punishable by death, torture, or prison time. That's serious business. Banned books have subject matters ranging from abortion, inequality, race, government topics such as terrorism, swearing, political reasons, religious reasons, sexual reasons, social grounds, rape scenes, anti-white sentiments, profanity, drug use, sexual situations. Well, you can see the list will go on and on. It's whatever someone feels is inappropriate. Then we have the banned books that are banned because they seem innocent but may construe thoughts that some people are not comfortable with. Well, for children's books, the topics may be transgender identity, homosexuality, or same-sex marriage that makes parents or adults feel uncomfortable. But it still leaves the question, how far is the request to ban a book willing to go? Local parents, teachers, and superintendents of school districts all over the world want to stop what is deemed inappropriate books from being accessible to the American public. You see, holding back information that is thought to be detrimental to these children or young adults has obvious reasons behind it. It's because as they grow up, they start forming their own beliefs, thoughts, opinions, and then actions on what they have learned or read when they were most vulnerable and younger. On mintpressnews.com, there is an article and a video about banning books. Mark Crispin Miller has started the Forbidden Bookshelf which has suggested books that Americans never even knew existed and were unavailable to read because they have either been banned or out of print for such a long time and because publishers won't publish those books anymore. Banned books go on and off the banned book list primarily because a book speaks to the moment that Americans are living in right now. For example, there are many banned books about terrorism and government surveillance right now because that's a hot topic in America. Words that we now consider out of bounds or unacceptable are the basis of banned books in the United States as well. Really, a good example of that is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. This book uses racial words and slurs and language that is completely unacceptable in the 21st century. And books that describe conditions that make groups feel bad or suppressed. Transgender books are hot topics in children's books, as I mentioned before, and go on the banned book list very frequently. I'll have a link to the video and article of Mark Crispin Miller in the show notes. We here at Talk Tales and Trivia take the acts of banning books very seriously because these are forms of censorship and strike at the very core of our country and the First Amendment, which we talked about on the top of the show. Thoughts about where we are today or where we are perhaps headed in the future, as far as our thoughts and beliefs are concerned. But not only that, banned books are banned also because of past and what Americans and the world has done in the past, trying to erase the past. Banning books is an evolution of our immediate culture and a history lesson for sure. Some of my favorite books have been on the banned book list, but they will remain on my bookshelf forever. I will share some of them with you today and you can decide for yourself.
1984 by George Orwell for its totalitarian thoughts and messages. Animal Farm by George Orwell for its views on communism. Keep in mind, these are things that people don't want you to think about or don't want you to have more knowledge about. Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Selinger, one of my favorites, for harsh language and sexual themes. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee for its racial slurs and beliefs. But let's calm down to end this episode on a happy note. Because it's not all about banned books all the time. We do have happy things happening in our lives. So I want to give you a little bookish trivia. Did you know that in 1731, Benjamin Franklin founded the very first public library? From NewYorker.com, we find that Franklin describes the conditions which necessitated the formation of the library. The high cost of books, the scarcity of bookshops, the lack of bookish men, the fact that we were all so poor. Thank goodness for Benjamin Franklin that we have the lending library that we can all enjoy books of all kinds, even those that may have controversial content. Where would we be without him? Have you ever experienced a cataclysmic event that has left you in a disoriented and confusing world? Gwendolyn has. Thankfully, she's been shown the way to a wonderful existence that no one, at first, could have ever imagined. Not even her. Southpaw, a tale about a girl's imagination by Stephanie Lee, coming soon. And now it's time for perhaps your favorite part of Talk Tales and Trivia, A Rave with Stephanie. I don't need to tell any of you how I feel about the new Bohemian Rhapsody movie that's coming out November 2nd. I am very excited, along with a bunch of other people. I am seriously obsessed and fascinated and have done so much watching on YouTube of Queen and Freddie Mercury, who I love. I watch interviews, I watch performances, I watch live events. I am really, really loving all of it. Freddie Mercury is a perfect example of someone that was censored, banned to some degree, as to coming out fully because of the way some people, maybe fans, felt about bisexuality and homosexuality at the time. Freddie did exactly what he wanted, but he knew he had to keep his illness quiet because of the possible backlash he would receive. Like most banned things, this should have never happened. And in today's society, this is not an issue at all. I often wish Freddie were here today to live the peaceful life that he should have been able to live all along without being afraid of what people thought, without feeling that he needed to censor himself. But luckily, he still didn't ban his own flamboyant look or actions that made him the most fantastic frontman ever. Fun to watch and always amazing. And for that, he should be applauded. I will leave a link to the July 13th, 1985 Live Aid performance and let you judge for yourself. It's a good one. Know this. No one can be banned or censored from thinking about his or her own core beliefs, no matter what they are. You, as an individual, are the only one stopping your thoughts. Don't let the government, a group, or another person tell you what to believe, or ban or censor your core beliefs. It is your right as an American citizen, as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral. That is it for our episode. I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit about banned books. As always, you can reach us at TalkTalesAndTrivia at gmail.com, or you can go to TalkTalesAndTrivia.com to hear this episode again, or share it, or to hear past episodes. We are Talk Tales and Trivia on Facebook. We are Talk Tales ETC on Twitter. And on Instagram, we are Talk Tales and Trivia. There's no excuse. You can go everywhere to get in touch with us. We hope you tune in to the next episode of Talk Tales and Trivia. And we have enjoyed this so much. See ya! See ya!